In this activity, we're going to be uh, completing a merge sort algorithm in Java. So if you haven't already watched the lecture video um, about more, it's uh, entitled More on Recursion, uh, I should probably do that now. That uh, talks about um, the general process of how merge sort works. So uh, just as a reminder, right, merge sort works by recursively, um, it's a divide and conquer algorithm where it's going to split Whatever it's trying to sort, it splits into two halves, and then it sorts the two halves recursively, and then it merges them, um, merges the sorted lists back together. Uh, and you should go ahead and download the merge sort.java from uh, the website uh, on the activities link, and um, go ahead and um, pause the video, and then go and see if you can complete your your job is filling all the uh, question marks in the Java program. There are two different static methods in this program, merge. And the whole purpose of merge is to take two integer arrays. So what we're sorting in this, this uh, particular program is an array of integers. And uh, merge takes two integer arrays, part one and part two. And its job is to merge those. So we assume part one and part two are sorted um, from lowest to uh, highest in, in the array and then create um, put the result in um, this result array uh, and we're assuming the uh, actually the caller has given you uh, enough m slots in this so basically this result array is uh, twice the size of part one and or not twice the size but um, the sum of the size of part one and part two merge does the merge part sort does the recursive sort algorithm and as we talked about in lecture, right, it's not actually doing it, you know, you might think the sort part is actually comparing things and shuffling them around and so on, but actually what it's doing is just splitting it into a half and then passing the two halves off to, uh, to itself recursively. And so go ahead and uh, work on filling the code in. And as you see, here's the main program. And the main program gets this, this array of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different integers. They're not in sorted order. It makes one call to sort nums, asking, uh, "Please sort this whole thing." And then when it's done, it's 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 sorted. So, go ahead and work on those two, and then uh, come back, and I'll show you the solution. So, uh, let's start by doing the. Uh, I guess we can start doing the merge. First line that's missing. Four k equals zero, and uh, what's k got to be less than? Well, what's this loop doing? Well, this loop is, uh, if you look at all the different parts of the loop, right, it's going result bracket k equals something. So it's filling in all the slots in this result array. And if the result array uh, is to be fully populated, then what do we need to loop to? Well, we need to loop until we reach the end of that um, result array. Oops, I take my caps lock off there result.length. So k equals 0 strictly less than result.length then we'll loop over all the index positions of uh, the array result. And you could have, I mean equally it could have been um, you know if you wanted to this could also be part 1 dot length plus part 2 dot length. Okay but I spelled that wrong. Alright that should be the same. Whoever calls this merge method should be giving us enough spots to put all our data in. What shall we put in the uh, right-hand side of this if condition? Well, what is the goal of the block? Well, um, the comment tells us we've used everything from part one. This is the case. Remember, when we're merging, we're pulling the smallest number off the pile from um, part one or part two. But if we've run out of everything in part one, then we have no choice but to take it from part two. And when does this occur? Well, this occurs if this index one, which is tracking how far we are into the part one array, when that reaches the length of that array, then we've used everything. If we've used everything for part one, where do we need to copy our value from? We need to copy that value from uh, part two, and we're using index two as our uh, counter variable to index the position into part two. And then we increment index uh, index two to the next value. Okay. That takes care of that case. Here's the comment telling us, well, if this is the case if we used everything in part two. Index two counts the index in uh, the second uh, 
array. And if index 2 hits the length of that array, then we know we've exceeded, we've basically pulled everything out of part 2 already. In which case we have no choice but to copy it from part 1 and we'll use part 1's index. These are kind of the cases, these two cases handle when um, sort of the end after we've used all of one or the other um, of the halves of the sort. This determines um, whether we should take the value from part 1 or part 2. And this if condition is if part 1 has the smallest item. So we want to check. We want this to return true if part 1, all right, and which one are we on in part 1? We're on part 1 bracket index. If it's less than part 2 index 2, then what do we do? We grab that value from the part 1 array and then increment its index value. Else, if nothing else was true, then we know we need to grab it from part 2. And we do that by taking uh, index, uh, index position 2 out of the part 2 array. All right, this should now be a working version of the merge which is actually the more complicated part. Um, this is really doing, you know, the heavy lifting. Now we can use some recursion and we can really uh, kind of, it sort of feels like cheating. Um, let's fill in the beginning part. First of all, we got to divide and conquer, so we need to divide that array up. And what's the midpoint of an array with, um, you know, nums dot length elements? We can just divide by two. And remember, Nums.length is an integer, 2 is an integer, so this is integer division. It's not going to produce a, uh, a floating point value, it's going to produce an integer and it's just going to drop the decimal point. But that's okay, uh, we don't really care if we have 7 things and 3 go into 1 and 4 go in the other, that's fine. It is, you know, as close as, as close as we can get. We're now going to copy, somebody passed us in the entire array nums, that contains all the data in sort of unsorted, jumbled order. We now want to copy it into these two halves. We want to have, um, you know, say three in one and four in the other if we had seven things in the nums array. How big shall we make it? Well, let's make this one equal to that midpoint. All right. And how much shall we make this one? Well, this one needs to be nums.length minus the midpoint. All right. We need a total of nums.length. That's how many total things came in originally, and that's how many have to go out. And we're just splitting it between D1 and D2. All right. Let's go ahead and copy the data into the two halves. How many data elements do we need to copy? Well, again, there's nums.length total things. Uh, you know, there's more than one way you can do it, but the way I've done it is I'm looping over all the numbers in uh, nums.length. All right, and if that i index is less than the midpoint, then we're going to go ahead and copy it into the d1 array. If we exceed the midpoint, we're going to copy it into the D2 array, but we have to make sure we subtract midpoint, right? D2 is zero based index, so it needs to start. The very first thing in um, D2 needs to be um, copied into index position zero, which it will be. Once we reach, once I is no longer the less than midpoint, then I equals midpoint. Therefore, midpoint uh, minus midpoint is zero. And so D2 will start at zero and then start copying the nums array. All right, and so that will separate our data into D1 and D2. How do we sort the two halves? Well, just sort them recursively. We can just call ourselves recursively on each of those two halves. All right, D1 and D2, these will magically become sorted, and then what do we need to do? Then we just need to merge D1, D2, and put the results in the nums array. All right, and if we've done everything correctly, then hopefully we get a sorted array, and we do.
So that's how to implement a merge sort algorithm using recursion in Java.